It is a Monday night in Midtown Manhattan, and the Iridium Jazz Club is packing in the crowds. Inside, the arthritic hands of an elderly musician tune a guitar before the evening performance. The man behind the instrument was born Lester Paulfus, but he is better known as Les Paul. I says, I think you needed a number three. <laughs> In the 1930s, Les Paul was in his prime. Performing by day with some of the biggest bands of the era, he spent nights learning music with some of the biggest names in the Harlem music scene. And so I would go up there and sit there with Lester Young and listen to him, Dizzy Gillespie, and they, hey, anybody you wish to name, Art Tatum, all the greats. He became a household name as head of the Les Paul Trio, heard on radio sets throughout the country. Some 70 years later, now as a quartet, he is still performing in front of full audiences, gathered to see a music pioneer. Well, I didn't realize uh, that I was a pioneer. I, I did realize that there wasn't the particular thing that I was looking for was not available. Paul wanted a guitar that he could play with a band or an orchestra that wouldn't be drowned out. He needed a loud guitar. Not just a musician, but also a lifelong inventor. Les Paul went to work on a new instrument. Originally using railroad steel and telephone parts, he created what is now one of the most widely used instruments, the single body electric guitar. To my amazement, there are so many today versus the fact that there was only one. I was the only guy who could get out there and play the guitar and do anything with it. And guitar is the number one instrument in the world today. When I was a kid, it was a piano. The Gibson Musical Instrument Company began manufacturing and selling Les's electric guitar. The Gibson Les Paul continues to be a top seller and preferred instrument of many musicians. My electronics was half of my life, and the other half of my life was music. And I found they married each other. You needed both of them to do what, 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 what happened. What happened began with Les Paul tinkering in his home recording studio. He combined recordings of different guitar sounds, blending in the voice of his wife at the time, singer Mary Ford. Somewhere there's music, I'll paint the tune. He then experimented with those tracks at different speeds and pitch and played them back simultaneously. The, the method, called multi-track recording, created a sound that came to define pop music in the 1960s. It continues to be a staple in sound recording today. For a lifetime of achievements, Les Paul was honored with a 2007 National Medal of the Arts, one of the nation's highest civilian honors, at a Washington, D.C. ceremony hosted by President George Bush in November. It was another milestone in a career this 1988 inductee into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame promises is far from over. If you're going to make a hundred, you only got a few years left, and uh, you have so much that you'd like to say or do. Things that you haven't finished doing yet that you would, would like, love to do. The town of Waukesha, Wisconsin is currently planning a permanent exhibit honoring its most famous citizen. The Les Paul Experience is scheduled to open there in 2010. The aging musician would then be 95 years old, and he hopes to be there to see it open. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, New York.